Hey Blue Table fans, I'm going to talk a little bit about Tau Tactics. And this is going out on a limb for me because I don't consider myself an especially good tactician or player of these miniatures battles games. But I did play quite a few games up at Valhalla and uh, you know, I actually had some success. I turned around a game that was uh, really, really difficult actually on this very board against orcs and also had a game against Grey Knights where I actually was like, whoa, this, uh, this particular tactic works. I call it the Hornet's Nest. And I'm sure somebody's thought of this before and uh, put it up before, but uh, you know, they probably weren't as awesome looking or sounding as me. So we're going to uh, give it a go. All right, so first off, my first game was interestingly against orcs and uh, my opponent had a bunch of trucks and a Morkanaut over here and uh, what was it? Oh, and a giant mob of bikes with a war boss with, uh, what's it called? The Lucky Sticks or whatever it is. And so that guy goes in front and he just rerolls saves and they jink and the whole thing. So what happened is uh, I deployed, because he set up first and, and ended up going first, I deployed kind of over here now, with the benefit of hindsight, because I wanted to get away from the bikes, right? So with the benefit of hindsight, I would have um, uh, actually castled up a lot harder over in this corner. Uh, but as it is, uh, what happened is he rolled up with all trucks right through this area here. And so basically with 12 inch move and 12 inch flat out, it just, you know, I mean, he was literally right at the 12 inch mark here and the bikers were right here. So what I did is I moved up the devil fish and to form like a wall, a solid wall like this. And if you, if you just leave, you can even leave a gap because things can't move between them because of the one inch bubble of respect. It's so like a biker probably couldn't move between that because it's a one inch, one inch, and then, you know, you can't fit the base between there. So anyway, but I moved them up nice and tight, and then I deployed the drones in a line. So the bikers basically, they shot away the drones, they assaulted like one or two of the devil fish, and then they created wrecks. But they were stuck there for a turn. They basically, to deal with that, they were stuck there. And in the meantime, I was handling all these orc boys. Now the Ivara uh, was a champ in both of these games. I highly recommend that battle suit. It's a new one from Forge World. I've already talked about its capabilities. I did a little demonstration of it, but um, the Ivara just went up and landed that flamer template across three of those trucks. And it killed 19 total boys out of 36, so over half. And uh, it, um, it didn't take out all the trucks, but the problem is the boys got out behind the trucks and then uh, the ones that were wrecks, they could basically just clamber over them and nothing could shoot at them. At so yeah, that game was a real nail biter because uh, each turn I basically just had this delaying action and then just shot at everything with my entire army. And in the end, I, uh, except for one whole point on the Morkonaut, I had tabled the orc army. Now bear in mind that in my army I have uh, lone wolf battle suits with double flamers, which I absolutely love. They are really good. And you might think, hey, that works against a horde army, but not against a you know a, a small model count like marine equivalent army. And by the way, sorry you have to look at this uh, table this whole time, but you know my voice is pretty awesome. So, but this same tactic worked well against gray knights. And so I'm going to do a little demo here. And this is, this is from a game that I actually had. Um, so I had uh, two Dread Knights, and they used their little teleport thing. One of them moved up here. One of them moved up there. And not on this board. This is on, like, a chemical plant board. And then a unit of Terminators with a Librarian, they moved up um, basically with, like, Gate of Infinity or whatever, and they moved right up to the edge of my deployment zone. And then a Drop Pod with... Space Marines and Flamers and stuff, and it landed right here. So I had Drop Pod, 10 Space Marines, like eight Grey Knight Terminators, two Dread Knights, on a, and a unit uh, up here of, um, what is it? <coughs> Excuse me, Missile Launcher guys. And one of my Flamer guys actually landed and blew up like four of them. It just annihilated that squad. It was great. A 56-point, uh, you know, lone wolf 
uh, crisis suit with double flamers and two gun drones. So anyway, so here's the hornet's nest tactic is, okay, so Dreadnought is here, so what a lot of people do is they start going, uh, run, uh, you know, they're trying to back up, but where, where are you even going, you know, with a six inch move and a, uh, a seven inch charge, you know, you've got 12, 13 inches at least that you need to be away. So I'm like, okay, well, for the greater good, so what I would do is I would actually move them up like this and leave my two inch coherency, right? And stay one inch away from the thing. So, and you gotta mind who you do this against because if they're jump troops, they can just go over it. But this guy, he, he couldn't go anywhere. Like to get closer to the rest of my army, which was like all over here, the fire warriors just circled him. And in fact, in the game, I actually did it a little bit tighter, which I shouldn't have, because then he used the torrent flamer to just lay it across. But one guy lived. Oh, excuse me. So anyway, my turn. So what I do is I move, I gently glide my devil fish over like this. I detach my drones. And then I start getting the drones in because they, they can go six inches, six inch deploy, and then 2d6 jump. So now I can get my drones up here. And that's at the end of the turn. So, but they were a little farther off in this case. So uh, so he flames these guys. That's his target. So he has to shoot the other thing at him. Miraculously, like one guy survives. So, and by the way, that guy lived till the end of the game. So now these guys are dead. And now I move my drones up. So same thing. So two drones at two inches apart. And because their bases are so big, uh, they actually, okay, I'm not showing you this perfect, but I think, I think you get the idea. So you just, you make sure they're maximally apart and you just, you, you, you delay this creature. So what you're doing is you're basically saying, okay, uh, I've moved these guys up. There's no way for them to escape their fates anyway. They're going to make a sacrifice for the rest of the army, crack a few eggs and all that. And basically now, now this model can't move. And it was the same thing with the Terminators. They were kind of in midfield here. And what I had done is I actually had like a battle suit with two drones. And, and by the way, that can spread out quite a bit. I had a battle suit and two, like I had basically just used a couple of units, maybe 150 points of guys to just surround those Terminators. So like they, and, and that was it. They could shoot one thing because you can't multi-shoot, right? You can't split fire typically. Um, and then, you know, they, they could multi-charge everything. Uh, but again, they take out the, they can't move. You've taken away the maneuverability and then the rest, like the broadsides and everything would just be like shooting into, and I just, oh my gosh, it worked so incredibly well, guys, that I, quite frankly, I can't wait to do another bat rep because I'm starting to get good with my towel. And uh, just this little thing where the drones come out and against the Grey Knights, we did victory points. So, uh, and uh, my opponent only had seven victory points on the table and I had like 24 victory points because these guys, I think they do give up VPs and I, all my little units. I mean, it was 18 victory points just with the devil fish and the, excuse me, 12 with just the devil fish and the fire warriors and the drones, the detachable drones. So, uh, so my only option after like turn two, after like eight things had been killed, was to basically table my opponent. And at the end of the game, I had two librarians, each with one wound, like literally running away, trying to hide from all the shooting. And then one dread knight kind of like running and like one drone like chasing, you know, or was it two drones? Anyway, the two drones like trying to get the last wound as uh, he, you know, moved off. So... Guys, it was, I know you got to use your imagination here in this little example, but uh, this, it, it was epic. It was really absolutely fantastic. And by the way, I am putting on my towel on the block tonight. Uh, you can check the liner notes for a price on that. And uh, it's an, uh, I'll have a list down there of uh, what's in it. And it is time, I've had my fun. It's time to try something new and uh, you know, go into the new year, go into the new year light and with some new and amazing ideas. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the fans and clients of BTP. They keep uh, myself and uh, well over 25 people all you know, with our bills paid. 
and don't think we don't appreciate it. Uh, we are constantly improving here. We are, you know, getting getting our game uh, tightened up uh, every 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 month that goes by.